There's something about quiches that seem a little bit old fashioned and people don't do it anymore. But you know what? I'm gonna bring a quiche back. So what I'm making for you today is a ham and leek quiche. First up, we've got some phyllo pastry. What we're gonna do is grab a couple sheets of this phyllo. We're gonna give them a nice little spray of some olive oil. Lay another sheet over the top. We're gonna do the same thing again. The reason I'm kind of layering them up like this is, see the little cracks that seems to happen when you're using like a frozen phyllo? When you layer it up like this, it kind of patches up those little cracks, which is exactly what I want. The third sheet over the top. Gorgeous, pat him down. We're gonna do the exact same thing again. Another sheet. So the reason that I'm using phyllo today is I love how kind of crunchy and light it gets so you're not adding too much pastry. Look, if you want to, you can use puff, but it will change the cooking time a little bit. Beautiful. So that's all done. You can set this aside. Next up, all we're gonna do is just line our tin with it. So what you wanna do is kind of overlap your phyllo into the tin, let it kind of just fall in naturally and create all of these nice grooves that there will become really crunchy and really beautiful once it's cooked. Let's give him a little spray just to join. Lay that in there. It's like a snug little bed for your quiche. All right, so our pastry is done. We're gonna set him over here and get onto the leek. What I'm gonna do is just halve the leek, then finely chop it so that you still kind of get a little bit of that kind of texture of the leek to little pieces of leek. Our pan's hot, we're just gonna put a little bit of olive oil in there. Throw that leek in, let it do its thing for about three minutes to just soften. Now, it's really, really hot, so I'm just gonna actually turn the heat down a bit just so that it does just soften away and doesn't burn. While that's happening, I'm just gonna chop up some ham that I've got here, because it is a ham and leek quiche. In goes the ham, and some of this seeded mustard. Give it a nice mix, just to make sure everything is incorporated really well, and all those flavors become great friends. The reason you're mixing it like this is, once it goes into the quiche, you kind of want, when you slice it, for every bite to be full of ham, leek, and a little bit of mustard. So the mixture for the inside of the quiche is done. I'm just gonna turn that heat off. I'm just gonna transfer it straight into this little tin that's been lined with the wonderful phyllo pastry. Make sure that it's kind of even all along the base. Five eggs straight into a bowl. One, two, three, kind of four, four. <laughs> and the last one, five, just in case you were counting along. We've got some cream here, which is gonna go into there as well. Some parmesan. We've got some salt to bring all those flavors together. Give it a quick mix. Now the cream in this actually helps the quiche not collapse, because obviously if you're cooking the eggs after a while, it'll start to kind of collapse on itself and it won't be as impressive. So the cream just keeps it aerated. So that's incorporated, it's looking lovely. Into the quiche it goes. Bring it straight in all over that beautiful filling. That little mixture of ham and leek deliciousness with the mustard. Gorgeous, let's make sure it's all surrounded. So I'm just gonna pour it around. So that's looking gorgeous, it's ready to go. We're gonna pop that into the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes on 180 and then check on it. So as you can see, our quiche is beautiful and caramelized on top. It's not done setting just yet, so that's a perfect time to pull it out. I'm gonna scatter some spring onions over the top, so it kind of reminds you of that leek flavor. We're just gonna do a rough chop. I wanna keep it pretty large still, just so you do see the spring onions and they do its thing. Scatter that on top. The reason that I didn't add this in earlier is because it tends to burn if it's kept in there for too long, and especially once you scatter on top, it sinks as well into the quiche mixture, so you kind of want it to finish cooking before you scatter it on. Time to pop that back into the oven for another 10 to 13 minutes, and then we'll be ready to go. 
So my quiche is done. It's had a little bit of time to cool. Look at that. Look at how beautiful that pastry is. I'm just going to try and lift it up and move it to a serving board. Please don't fall apart on me. This is always so scary. There we go. Absolutely gorgeous. And if you saw what I just did, I actually lifted the base onto a little ramekin to kind of hold it up to help it come out. So I just slice this up now so you can have a look at what it looks like on the inside. See that crunch? Yummo! This is gonna be so good. My little piece of quiche right there. So that there's my quiche. It's a little bit old school, a little bit retro, but I'm bringing it back. Beautiful, delicious, took all of half an hour. Give it a go for yourself, my ham and leek quiche.